We stand with Israel. We stand by Israel. Canada stands with Israel. As Israel pulverizes Palestinians in Gaza, it's more clear than ever. Canada has become one of Israel's most extreme supporters. They sell Israel weapons, they back them at the UN, they offer them special trade access, they even serenade their leaders. Someone obviously didn't tell Stephen Harper what Jude means in German. So what explains this relationship? The relationship between Israel and Canada are more than friendship. Okay, right. I like you. <laughs> That's right. In 2005, Liberal Prime Minister Paul Martin put it this way. Israel's values are Canada's values. They are indeed the values of settler colonial states. Both cleared the land of indigenous peoples to make room for settlers. Both impose and entrench that land theft with police or military violence. Both signed one-sided treaties to normalize this inequality on the ground. And both offer tearful apologies, but won't stop committing their crimes. While like recognizes like, the policies of Israel and Canada are fundamentally shaped by a far greater superpower, the United States of America. Since Israel's foundation, Canada has assisted U.S. interests in the Middle East, backing a strong client state to help control the region's oil and keep Arab nationalism in check. During the deliberations over the partition of Palestine, Canadian diplomats took the American lead. We will have nothing to say until after the United States has spoken. In the 1950s, the U.S. wanted to sell fighter jets to Israel, but were worried about their support being visible so Canada sold it for them instead. Ladies and gentlemen, the Royal Canadian Air Force proudly presents... Over the following decades, Canada voted so often with Israel and America at the UN that it developed a reputation as their second BFF. In some cases, Canada outdid even the US. By the 1980s, most of the world had recognized the PLO as the Palestinians' official representatives at the UN. When US President Ronald Reagan indicated that they too would open contact, Ottawa refused, making them the last country apart from Israel to formally deal with the PLO. In 1993, the US, with Canada by its side, presented themselves as peace brokers, helping ink the Oslo Peace Accords. But the so-called peace process wasn't intended to create an independent Palestinian state. It was intended to create, as former Israeli Foreign Minister Shlomo Ben-Ami acknowledged, a permanent neo-colonialist dependency. Back at home, Canada's spy agency targeted Palestinian activists who opposed this development. Canada began pouring tens of millions into a corrupt Palestinian authority who managed the occupation on Israel's behalf. With Canadian and US backing, a Palestinian security force more accountable to Israel than its own people would soon crack down on dissent. They also inked a free trade agreement that recognized Palestinian territory as de facto part of Israel. Billions in trade ensued. Canadian companies built the Israeli Air Force's communication system, and components for bombers and helicopters, unmanned drones and maritime patrol aircraft, surveillance systems, and body armor. They've even helped build the highways used by Israeli settlers that are off limits to Palestinians, creating what Israeli human rights group at Selim calls a regime of apartheid. Under conservative Prime Minister Stephen Harper, Canada started outdoing the US once again in their extreme support for Israel. It's given a warm welcome at the Knesset, even given the key to Israel's parliament. And when Palestinians in Gaza voted for Hamas in fair and free elections in 2006, Canada became the first country in the world to cut off aid to the Palestinian Authority, to teach them a lesson for doing democracy the wrong way. Canada's votes at the UN by this point were so one-sided that even government officials complained in private. Voting against the majority of these resolutions, while welcomed by Israel and the US, has been perceived as unbalanced by the Palestinians, the Arab nations, and the G77 plus China. Today, as the Israeli state engages once again in open 
ethnic cleansing of Palestinians in Gaza, Canada continues to parrot what the U.S. says, quite literally. The blast killed hundreds of people yesterday. This morning, President Biden said intelligence appears to show it was, quote, done by the other team, meaning Palestinian militants. Does he agree with President Biden that the offending missile originated with terrorists in Gaza? It means humanitarian pauses must be considered for these purposes. Canada supports humanitarian pauses in order to protect civilians. The good news is that public opinion in Canada now strongly diverges from our government. Three out of four Canadians want Canada to oppose the Israeli annexation of Palestinian land, and nearly half want Canada to impose economic or diplomatic sanctions against Israel. A growing movement is connecting the dots, calling for decolonization at home and abroad. Respect for international law, an end to military violence, and most important of all, land back. That would break Canada free of the U.S. empire and help achieve justice and peace for all.